Welcome to this edition of the Lee Day podcast. We're joined today by George Peasgood, para triathlete and para cyclist, uh, supported by Lee Day. Uh, and George has joined us today uh, to talk about his sport and also about his uh, preparations for Tokyo 2020. Uh, welcome, George. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in and talking to us. I know that we're probably stopping you from training no, today. No, no, not too much. It's all it's all easy to fit in and around. I'm doing triathlon, it's quite a quite an easy sport to fit in just anywhere. <laughs> just easy, yeah. I just do it whenever. So, like today, I mean, what have you done in terms of training uh, this morning? What 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 will training be? Uh, so yeah, just c- coming down here to London. Um, I train in Loughborough, so. I just kind of factored it in, did a morning uh, speed session in the pool um, and we do kind of a half hour sort of treadmill just loosen off later this afternoon and yeah, it's just a bit of an easier day, um, build it back into things after a moment of season break as well. Because I know from cycling, the, the, the cycling season kind of winds down October, November, uh, uh, is it the same with triathlon? You've got that off season and during the winter months. Yeah, so um, the triathlon season yeah runs pretty much from May through to September. Um, I have two weeks kind of try to do forced rest uh, almost by my coach, uh, and then two weeks kind of yeah just build in whatever I fancy. Usually it's a week off slash a week of just a little bit of running here and there, and then build back into it. Um, yeah, I just lo- like training and enjoy it. So I um, only really have yeah, a couple of days a week off and then just building through to the next year and kind of start getting that mileage up uh, to train through winter. So the first triathlon you did, I'm looking through the notes I've made, looking back at what you were doing. The first triathlon you did was 2010? Yeah. And you'd be, what, 15, 16 years old? Yeah, f- 15 years old, yeah, in 2010. And you'd, just, you'd had an operation in 2009. Yeah. Do you, can you just explain a little bit about that operation and what uh, what that then enabled you to do? Yeah, so um, that operation was a leg length procedure um, using a, an Lazaroff and Taylor spatial frame. For those out there that know what it is, basically it's a, a best thing of it is like a Meccano contraption uh, around your leg uh, with pins going through your leg and out the other side, some going just into the bone. Um, and basically they break your tibia fibula and you stretch your leg out. Is the best way of describing it. Um, I had that on for two days shy of nine months um, and they managed to grow my leg 4.7 centimetres over that time. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it was a long process but it was definitely needed. I was starting to get scoliosis in my spine um, and growth plates were affected in my leg from my accident at a younger age. So it's kind of, yeah, they waited for this, this period in between growth spurts to do this operation, did that and then, um, yeah. Had my leg a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> and your your family had been a very very sporty family. So were you able to do much sport when you were younger? When you were say like five six years old? Because I believe the accident occurred when you were two and a half years old. Yeah. So how did that restrict you as a as a young child, or did it not? Uh, well, yeah, it simply didn't. Um, it happened on yeah, it was the twenty eighth of May, nineteen ninety eight. Um, yeah, I was two and a half years old. Uh, accident with a ride on a lawnmower and I, I thankfully don't remember it um have slight vivid memories kind of of the years after um but yeah like I think because not remembering it and being in a very sporty family I just did sport because I did sport yeah um I was just did it and enjoyed it and never ever saw anything different with me I didn't have um any like leg length or foot length discrepancies at that age and was just kind of doing everything that anyone else would do um, so I was just going along with what all my peers and friends and family were doing. So what sort of sports were you doing then? Were, were you cycling at that young age? Or was... Anything possible really yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah my parents live quite close to Thetford Forest so we'd go around Thetford on mountain bikes um, my parents got both got involved with running and marathons and uh, just everything school sports as well so yeah. there was, I think I even did Netball, uh, hockey, football, rugby, everything, just, you name it. I was just quite sporty and just did everything possible. So why triathlon? Why, why uh, did, were you looking for a sport to specialise in and triathlon was... No, <laughs> <laughs> in simple forms. Um, it was my, my dad that started triathlon for the family originally. Um, I think it was back in 2007. Uh, he was training for London Marathon and had, a, I think it was an ankle stress fracture. 
Um, so did a bit of swimming and cycling as rehab for that really. Um, got involved with the local tri club back at home and then my brother and mum joined in as well and they were doing it. Um, there wasn't a junior tri club at the time, um, but then after that operation I had in 2009, there was a junior club coming to the, to the town in South Morden. Um, joined that just because everyone else in the family was doing it at that point. So I just kind of went for two hours on a Saturday morning and that was what I classed as quite much training back then. Um, and yeah, just joined in purely because my family were doing it and saw it as a bit of fun. So in 2013, uh, you were the youngest medalist in an ITU championship. Yeah, I think uh, one of the youngest, or the, yeah, one of the Let's youngest. Let's call it the youngest, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll accept that. Uh, yeah, that was in uh, Hyde Park in London. That was a really special year. It was my first um, kind of major world championship. Um, and obviously like, the family could come along and watch and it was in Hyde Park the year after London and the able-bodied kind of triathlon lot were racing on a similar course or the same course as they did it the year before in the Olympics. The Olympics and yeah. It was it was all just absolutely a massive buzz and everyone kind of kept that buzz from the Olympics and did, went down to watch spectate and participate the year after as well. So it was, that was a really good year. Yeah. Was that the time you got the bug or had you got the bug? before do you think or was that is that the thing that just stays in your memory that 2013 Hyde Park event uh yeah like I think it kind of it just if I kind of just grew over the years so I, I got um put, put on the talent team um and I kind of came into paratriathlon but at the back end of 2011 um 2012 didn't really do much training kind of had my first coach Steve Cassens and Kind of, kind of guided me into a bit more formal training, kind of did a, a senior competition, national competition, came second there, but I hadn't competed in Sashi, it was just kind of building up, doing what I'm doing and just enjoying it. Um, and then, yeah, kind of 2013, kind of trained a little bit more, went to Europeans, uh, finished fifth at the European Champs, and then, yeah, into London for the World Champs, yeah, finished third. Um, so it kind of just grew and grew, um, and then that's kind of escalated and snowballed even more and more since. Are you talking about coaching there? Yeah, I know that you're centred at the Triathlon Centre at yeah. Loughborough. I know from experience how sporty, it's, it's a sporty <laughs> mecca just there, isn't it? Uh, d- describe the facilities you, you've kind of got there. Yeah, so I, mo- I moved up to Loughborough after finishing my A-levels in 2014 and was put on a, a part-time uh, course there to get a degree as well and yeah like the facilities there are just outstanding they're second to none probably the best best center for triathlon in the country perhaps the world and it's just e- everything's there especially for paratriathlon that's yeah. where, where the home of british triathlon's based it's where my physio is the doctor is the the pool the track the gym everything's world class and everything's to the best of its uh ability there um but it's not just triathlon you say you've got uh, at Loughborough, there's, I mean, it is a, a very sporting university. Yeah. Uh, do, do you train with, with people in other um, disciplines? Uh, no, so I'm part of the LTPC, which is the Loughborough Triathlon Performance Centre. Um, okay. So I train, I train with the uh, Able Body Squad there, although they do have a paratriathlon squad there as well. Um, but they've got all sports that are based in Loughborough. They've got um, swimming, so Adam Peaty's based there, for instance, and just loads and loads of other sports and there's the elite athlete hotel which i think is the only hotel slash rooms accommodation in the world i believe that kind of can go up to everest base camp sort of altitude so british athletics and i think mo farrow's used the hotel and it is kind of the center of excellence and that's kind of what love was about on top of the triathlon that you've been doing, you've also been um, focusing on cycling. It is, I know it's difficult, it's like saying which is your favourite child, but you know, of the disciplines, is cycling your favourite discipline or is it just one that you've, you know, you, you've. Yeah, cycling is one of my favourite disciplines. I used to kind of really dislike running, get a lot of pain from running um, over the years and kind of progressing that even more. Um, I've come to love it. Um, I love swimming, I love cycling, I love running, um, which is why I do triathlon. Uh, but yeah, there is there is a special place for cycling. It's what I used to do most. It's what I used to do more as a younger child. It's what I used to kind of do more of when I was starting training in triathlon as well. And yeah, kind of, I do see myself as, 
as a cyclist in some parts, but I am a triathlete. Um, it's what I also love. And whilst I might go down the cycling route in the future, at the moment it, it is triathlon because uh, that's where where all my emotion and passion lies. But in uh, 2018, I'm not trying to steer you down this <laughs> as a cyclist myself. I'm not just trying to, you know, make you love cycling, but cycling is the best. I do love uh, cycling. Yeah, <laughs> but 2018, you get a silver in the road time trial in Ostend, yep. in Belgium. So obviously you've got this, this talent on, on the bike, uh, but they're fifth in the road race. Now, I know you just, uh, we were talking before, and you said, oh, just fifth. Not bad though, is it? You know, fifth in the world, you know. Yeah, that was yeah, fifth at world champs. It was. But, but it's uh, a disappointment. Oh. You, you, you <laughs> disappointed. Uh, a little bit. I knew I was capable of a bit more back then. Um, yeah. A little bit of naivety around just kind of the cycling specific training. Um, but everything I do in cycling is as a result of my triathlon training. Yeah. So I've not changed anything dramatically, and if anything, I've just trained more for triathlon. And in recent years, I've just no, noticed that I've become a better cyclist as well. And that, that is actually where one of my greatest strengths is. In, in triathlon, I have a really awesome cycling leg that I blow my trumpet too much. And then in, in cycling, where the categories are slightly different, it's, I also do very well. Um, well, let's talk about the categories. So for people who might not know about the different classifications in paratriathlon and paracycling, in uh, paratriathlon, your P is it PTS five? Yeah. Uh, just explain to people what that uh, what that classification is. Yeah. So the most most common way of describing someone in a PTS five uh, category is someone with a either a kind of a minor below knee impairment or a below elbow impairment. Um, myself, I've kind of got a semi fixed ankle, um, so I've only got twenty degree plantar flexion uh, from neutral, which is pointing my foot and I've got no sideways movement of my ankle, and my left leg's actually a bit longer than my right as well, so I've got, I've got no calf and kind of limited movement there. Um, the other people in that triathlon category, or the majority of people are below elbow amputees. Um, so obviously I, as someone with both my arms, uh, kind of get a bit of an advantage on the swim compared to them, um, whereas they get a, quite a strong advantage, especially on the run, but also in the cycling where it kind of a bit more uh, power on the bike, but obviously they have a slight handling disadvantage on the bike there. Yeah, um, uh, but in cycling, then there's a, the it's a different classification. It's C four in cycling. Yeah, so in cycling, it's a pure below knee impairment category. Uh, so I race uh, below knee amputees more commonly, um, and in cycling, the classification is seen as my impairment is the same as a below knee amputee. I've got the same amount of function as someone that would race with a prosthetic. Um, so I'm yeah, in that category and rightly so really. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, they separate out the blow elbow and blow uh, knee impairments and cycling. In cycling. So this year um, you you went onto the track. You, yep. you, you got a, a silver in the 4,000 metres individual pursuit yep. at the World Championships. Tell me a little bit about how you found the track, getting onto the track and racing Valadon for the first time. When did you first go get on a track bike? So I first started to try on a track bike back in um, 2017. I raced for a bit of fun. I had a week lab testing with triathlon. I thought, you know, I'm going to end that week with a with the national champs for track cycling. Did that just off a bit of a whim. Borrowed bike, borrowed everything. Uh, and I did a, what was it, I think it was like a 5.17 4K pursuit, which is pretty shabby. Um, <laughs> and just, yeah, I did it as a bit of a whim. Uh, kind of one, one of my sponsors, um, who were sponsoring the Who What Bike track team yeah. uh, for 2018-19, and now into next year as well. And they kind of put me in touch and said, if I want to give a track another go kind of for the year, then, then I had the option to. Um, and they were quite keen to kind of get that link between who, what bike, the track team, the who, the triathlon company, and myself as well. Um, so I kind of, yeah, I jumped on one of the Argon track bikes and kind of had all the expertise of Dan, Bigham, and all the who, what bike team behind me, and just gave it a bit of a try. Uh, found out that actually I could do all right. <laughs> uh, went to the national champs, kind of smashed almost everyone out the park, and kind of blew, blew a lot of the BC lot away with what I was able to do whilst... I think I'd done three lots of race efforts up to that point. Um, 
Yeah, so they very kindly asked if I would want to go and do the World Champs. Did that and yeah, came away with second there. But that was a, a bit of a struggle week because I kind of fit everything I do for triathlon around that as well. Oh, so you're still training so for was, triathlon yeah. while you were racing? The World yeah. Champs. So uh, I, I think I did a run session, kind of, I did two run sessions a week leading up to it. Uh, so two days before, I did a swim session, two days before, kind of had one day fairly easy. That's about it. Uh, and then got a silver and then my chance for track cycling. Yeah, um, so, uh, uh, what bike you ready? So you got an Argon bike. Sorry for the bike nerds out there, including myself. Yep. What are you? What? What? Uh, what did you win the silver on? What was it? An Argon. Argon eighteen. It's the the Neutron track bike. Um, kit out with everything that uh, who what bike have to offer. So it's got like the pyramid uh, cycle design chain rings, which are absolutely massive, amazing. The walk up on the wheels and. Uh, the custom arm pads and everything. It was yeah, it's a solid bit of yeah. And, and what gear were you riding? Do you it want was, to share uh, that? Are you? Uh, I think it was a hundred and eight uh, inch. I think that was a sixty. It was either sixty or sixty four at the front and a 50, 16 at the back. I think. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty hefty gear, but um, it's like that's something around like drive train efficiency as well. And I, I take I've taken all that knowledge and uh, they've really helped me kind of put that towards my road bike and my time trial bike. Yeah. Um, as well, so I also run a, a 60 tooth on the um, time trial bike on the racing on the road as well, which is pretty uh, big. Blimey, yeah, <laughs> that's meaty. Um, and, and this, uh, a lot of the track obviously now we're getting quite a, uh, a community around the Derby at Velodrome that's been yep. there for a couple of years. People we, drop probably because Darbados, they call it. Yeah, Darbados. It, it's uh, become the birthplace of a lot of fantastic rides. Are you going to be doing the track next year, or are you all for triathlon for coming into the Olympic year? Yeah, so it it was very it's very much dependent on what the schedule is looking like for the games. And as soon as it was released, kind of we had to sit down and work out because I would I would love to be a multi sport medalist um, yeah. and compete in two sports at the Prime Olympics. The only other British person to do that is Kadena Cox um, in Rio for athletics and cycling. Unfortunately, there's. The 4K pursuit for my category would be, I think it's two days before the triathlon in Tokyo. And for anyone that knows, the venues for cycling in Tokyo are quite away from the athlete village and where triathlon is going to be based. So it's kind of like a two, three hour drive away. And committing to doing a, a, a track event like that a couple of days before the triathlon where I wouldn't have the facilities to train leading up to it, I wouldn't be comfortable with. So I'm not focusing on track for next year, but hopefully I will give it a go to go for the time trial and road race, uh, which sit kind of at the back end of the schedule. They're three, four days after the top the uh, triathlon, okay. where I, I feel really confident, especially with my background in training, that I could deliver an all you can effort in triathlon, and a few days later be ready again to do that again in, a, in another sport. So getting ready for the Olympics, we've talked about you having this off season. When does it really begin, or has it begun already? Yeah, yeah, winter training's already started. It's been it's been going for well, we know we're early December, so it's been going for kind of a month and a half. <laughs> um, yeah, I had two weeks off, kind of then gradually build back up. I'm back up to kind of normal, like good structured hours. Yeah, I think even this week, last week. Um, and yeah, just getting good, some some really solid winter miles in, and kind of starting to get some really good meaty sessions in as well. So nowadays, because my day, um, you know, the winter miles, it was, yeah. you did 100 to 150 as far as you could, and in the worst weather that you you could find to try and make yourself feel like you were doing good miles. But that's not the way now, is it? It's about quality as the quantity now. Yeah, there's there's still an essence of quantity does have a quality of its own, and sometimes you do just need to get the hours in. But yeah, like with with the equipment and the options we've got for training these days, like you can hop on Swift and kind of get a couple of easy hours in there, especially when it's grim, when it's icy or snowy outside, and and that's one of the great things about Loughborough again is that. Everything's there. So if have it, you got what bikes there? Are you, are you training? Yes, I've got it's Zwift on what bikes? Yeah, so like I've made a little bit of a, a heat shed in my back garden. I've got a shed that's been double, triple, double insulated, painted with bathroom paint, and got an oil heater in, and it gets pretty roasty. I've got a through the kind of support with the Who What Bike team. I've got what bike in there. Can hook up to Zwift. 
kind of what I can do in the winter sessions and whilst also getting a bit of hots as well. Yeah, favourite course on the swift? What's your favourite? I'll just go random. I'll just go random. Just like, <laughs> like, like just everything. Don't care. Just random. Yeah, like, I, I, I'm a bit of a, a heavier guy to like the climbs really compared to the typical cyclist that likes climbs. But I like, because I'm, I'm a time trialist at heart, um, I love the kind of you're going up this path for this long. Yeah. So I, I quite enjoy the climbs actually. <laughs> out of the Zwift, although my cousin always beats me up it because he's 15 kilos lighter than me. But yeah, well, yeah, I've got all the power compared to him. And I've actually put it on the road. You put in uh, your 30 kilometers. Put yeah. your weight down. Put your weight down, yeah. Um, so we talked about the, the training for next year. So as part of that training, some of that's going to be some real racing. So what's yeah. your schedule for leading up to the Olympics next year in September? Uh, so kind of the tri season kick off and and the road cycling season kind of kick off in uh, May time. So I do uh, the, I think we try world champs uh, kind of the early part of the year, and they tend to be the kind of front part of the year, especially when it's uh, Paralympic year. Um, so yeah, I go do a couple of triathlons. Hopefully, do race the UCI world champs again on the road, and it's some of my favourite course in Ostend where I do quite well. <laughs> um, so hopefully, get a good result there, and kind of it's really progressing, kind of getting the good blocks in as well. So I know I've kind of figured out a couple of races that fit in really well. There's some early ones, and kind of you want to keep race tuned in as well. Um, so I've looked for a couple of kind of like June, July, August as well. Um, kind of. I like to have my training blocks, so I have a block race, block race. Um, I really get them in. Um, but yeah, there's probably four or five different races I've target, and but obviously you want to be in peak form for August, the 29th of August, I think it is, for the triathlon. Um, yeah, so every, everything's going to be building up to then. I'll kind of show my face a little bit, do a couple of races, test out a few new, new things that we'll we hopefully have a good little uh, improvements on. Excellent, excellent. Well, Good luck. Good luck from us at Lee Day and uh, thanks very much for coming in, George. I've been great to meet you.